Welcome to the No Pope Podcast, your home for non-political news, with your hosts, No Pope founder, Vera Gibbons, and media commentator, Mitch Rochelle. No Pope, news without the noise. Welcome everyone to the No Pope Podcast. I'm Vera Gibbons, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Mitch Rochelle and John Iannuzzi. We have a lot of non-political news to get to, and we have a very special guest waiting in the wings. But I wanted to give a quick public service announcement before we started, and it is, do not use Gorilla Glue as hairspray. I don't know if really? anybody saw, yeah, I don't know if anybody saw this story, <laughs> <laughs> but there was a woman who used it thinking it was hairspray, and the whole thing went viral, millions and millions of views, blah, blah, blah. But it took a plastic surgeon four hours to actually remove it. He used medical grade ad- Pizza remover, aloe vera, olive oil, acetone. Just an insane story. It, it was getting a lot of tweets and retweets. And as I say, a lot of views because it's just an insane story. I mean, this is a heavy duty glue. This is used for bonding, ceramic, stone. It's industrial strength stuff. So before we get started, that's my public service announcement. Hello, Mitch. So I, w- John. I, I want to hear the 911 call when the woman realized she had glued and, and it, it's not out of the realm of possibility that you, cause I know hair product as well as the next male, but you do have to run your hands through your hair when you're applying product and your hands could get stuck to your head. If you were using Gorilla Glue, I would think I'm no expert in uh, ointments that are adhesive, but I'm thinking, John, do you have a view on that? I just wonder, I mean, can it could probably get into your bloodstream too, right? Mm-hmm. It any could. little, it any like little you... nicks or cuts or. It, it's, it's got a lot of alcohol in it too. I think that's what keeps it from coagulating in the jar, but that, that, that could be the story of the week. And I feel like whenever we air this, it still will be out there in some way, shape or form. The question is, as we're doing this via Zoom, for those in the audience, will the story about the guy in Texas that had the cat face before the magistrate, (laughs) will that story still be around? How long will that one stick around? That was a good one, too. That was a good one, too. And what do we think about Bruce Springsteen's DWI? I I have thoughts on this. All right, John. John, let's hear him. First of all, the the Jersey State Trooper, or I don't, I think he was a park ranger, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That pulls over the greatest export from New Jersey ever. This is heresy, and he was under the limit, right? He had one shot. I think he. I think point eight is the threshold in the Garden State, and I believe he was point three. I thought he didn't take a breathalyzer. I mean, he apparently reeked of alcohol. His eyes were glassy. Um, A whole bottle of Patron was apparently gone from what I've heard and read. But I don't know. There's a lot of holes to the story. What what exactly? I just I honestly thought that if anyone would get a pass in New Jersey, it would be it would be Bruce. And I thought to myself, they're treating Bruce like Joe Piscopo. This is the boss. (laughs) No disrespect to Joe Piscopo, mind you. Who, by the way, I once got thrown at him and they had to make room at Liberty Broadcasting when he decided to run for governor. I was working at Liberty Broadcasting in Newark, New Jersey, and they came down the hall and they said, "Uh, you guys got to clear out of here. Joe's campaign headquarters is going to be up here. Oh, so your studio. So guy. we we yeah we had to move, we had to move offices to accommodate his gag run for governor of New Jersey. It, interesting. That's very that's very interesting. But back back to the boss. It's interesting how, and I'm going to walk the tightrope of political, but it's interesting how that story. This happened during the summer. Broke after the Super Bowl and after the Super Bowl ad. Um, it was out there. It wasn't a new thing. Um, And it was the post that ran the story first, I believe. So it's 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 origins are questionable. Yes. Yes. I think it happened in November. I mean, he was drinking on the park premises in Sandy Hook. Like I said, he appeared intoxicated. But and like John said, you'd think he would get some sort of pass because he is the boss and the park guy maybe could have 
offer to give him a ride home. Did he not know who he was? I mean, uh, everybody knows who he is, right? So then maybe he just didn't. Wait, no, no, no self-respecting, no self-respecting civil servant in New Jersey. I mean, I think to, to pass the test to become some official in New Jersey from traffic guard to librarian you have to know the lyrics of born to run i'm just i'm just thinking so that yeah that's my point so this guy must have had an axe to grind yeah i did not like the new york post headline born to rum because it was not rum it was tequila. <laughs> but that doesn't rhyme vera i know you're i don't uh, care i was thinking you're a I was journalist thinking, i was thinking there's got to be a better headline than born to rum something tequila oriented something shot oriented does he have shot in any of his lyrics i was like Eh, I, I felt like yeah, I could there is. better. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I will come up with a song that's more okay. appropriate. What's interesting to just change the topic slightly, and I, th- maybe we'll get our guests to weigh in on all of this because this could consume the show. How about the drunk Tom Brady video that went viral? Did you see that? Saw that. Yeah. He deserves to go out and party and get drunk. He yeah, I, I, amazing. I, 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 listen, I was a Tom Brady. I've said it, I think I said it last week. I was a Tom Brady hater. I was really a Patriots hater, probably a Bill Belichick hater, but you got to respect Tom Brady. There's, there's no question about it. You just have to respect the guy. I I watched the Super Bowl with my cousin Perry, who does listen to the Nopo podcast and he's been a lifelong chiefs fan. So we were watching up in Boca at his uh, place and he was, you know, we're wearing all the garb and everything. So I felt for him, but you got to respect Tom Brady. That was a, that was an epic win. So my sure hat's was. Off. drink all you want, throw the, the, the Lombardi trophy. All you want. I don't care. You, you deserve it. And now he's actually having some, some cleanup work done on his knee. He's undergoing the knife right now. So he'll be right as rain for next season. He'll be ready to go again. Oh yeah. By the way, I, I was corrected as anticipated. I did get a lot of kickback on, some of the, I've, honestly, a lot of it I can't even read on, on the air here, but uh, people don't like the fact that I now enjoy watching Tom Brady play football. And um, the other thing is that I, I was incorrect. He is, it's too s- simple to say he's a vegan. Uh, someone corrected me that he has many tiers of protein that he consumes. Some of them are derived from animals. So I stand corrected. He is not a vegan. It's more complex than that. Well, maybe we can get him on the air. You know, the, I'll talk to the massive booking team that we have and see if they can reach out to his people and we could get Tom Brady. Or if we could get any, there's a kid who's, I believe, a freshman at Michigan who's on the track team named Tom Brady. And uh, mm-hmm. University of Michigan Sports had a side by side comparison of that Tom Brady versus the kid who's a freshman, Tom Brady. So maybe I can get that other Tom Brady. The, the amount of memes with Tom are incredible. You could just because of the accomplishments, they 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 measure entire teams against him now. It's 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 a pretty high bar. It, it's a pretty high bar. Well, speaking of high bars, let's bring in our guest. Uh, I don't know how that segue does anything to do her justice, but uh, I've known Jean Chatsky so long that I have a in my phone, which probably dates back to my Palm Pilot. I have an entry in there for Gene Sherman. That's how long I know Gene Chatsky. And Vera, I would suspect when you worked together at Smart Money, she could have been Gene Sherman. Um, but yes. that goes back. That goes back so many decades. We're just, you know, carbon dating ourselves. Uh, but Gene Chatsky is a financial journalist and author of how many books, Gene? I think it's 11. 11. We had you, we had you, <laughs> when, you know, you've written too many books or so many books when you can't even remember how many you've written. I can't even, re- I, I haven't read 11 books in my life and uh, that weren't on a syllabus and required by a faculty member, but you've written at least 11. We'll, we had you at 15. We'll stick with 15 and Jean's latest endeavor, her money media, which she is the chief executive officer of. We'll talk about a bit. But she was dutifully listening in the green room, smiling and nodding her head. And I'm sure you have something to say about the Bruce Springsteen story. So we'll let you weigh in on that. You're not a New Jersey native, but uh, you probably have an opinion on Bruce Springsteen. I was I was smiling and laughing along when you were talking about how 
it's criminal not to know the words to Born to Run because I was thinking back to, and this will this will date me, but probably 1980 or 1981 at some sort of high school dance for a Jewish youth social group. And I did not know the words to Born to Run. And the guy I was dancing with was like, not happy to dance with me anymore because because that was completely um I, I could have just gotten kicked out for for not knowing the words right that there was, that was heresy so where because gene you grew up all around the country in some respects where were you in 1981 was that in pennsylvania it was the the dance was actually in pennsylvania but i was living in wheeling west virginia we just there were not enough jews in wheeling <laughs> west virginia to field enough for a dance. So uh, we piled on to, uh, to the Jews of Pittsburgh, so to speak. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't your dad run a bunch of news stations? He, he did. He did. So I, um, and Mitch, Mitch actually knew my father, um, I which is, I mean, Mitch and I go back generations um, yeah. because. Uh, I knew your grandfather. You, you knew my grandfather. Yeah. Mr. We, Sherman. He was Mr. Sherman. <laughs> it, <laughs> he was Mr. Wouldn't. Sherman to everybody. But <laughs> but uh, we were in Madison, Wisconsin and Bloomington, Indiana. My dad was a college professor. He taught communications and then he started running TV stations. And it took us to Wheeling, West Virginia and took my parents to Peoria, Illinois after that. But I, I didn't have the pleasure of moving to Peoria. I was in New York by that point. Not to make the show about Chuck Sherman, but I, I once said to Gene's dad that I thought when he ran a trade association for broadcasters, I think they were living, uh, your folks were living in D.C. at the time. Uh, I once told your dad that I thought he had the coolest job in the world because he got to watch television for a living, basically. I didn't realize that uh, our kids' generation would actually do that uh, in yeah. college, but you know, through the, through through Netflix and other streaming services. Uh, that's my favorite text from my kids, uh, like at three o'clock in the morning. What's the Amazon Prime password again? <laughs> Exactly, or Disney, or whatever they're stealing these days. I mean, my my kids are are um, are gainfully employed, uh, but we still are using all of our passwords. You know, one of the things I did. This is a little message to our listeners. I changed. I have standard passwords that I use for certain things. I have ones for financial stuff, and I have ones for what I'll call lifestyle stuff, and. Um, my kids know the passwords because of these streaming services. So when I text them, I text it in code so they'll know what it is. But then I realized, even though they tell me they don't, if they were to share the password with somebody, moreover, if they were to leave the password on a device and that device got hacked for some reason. So this is almost like a Gene Chatsky segment on one of the many media platforms that she's on. Uh, of news you can use, don't use those important passwords on those streaming services because once your kids share them or leave them, they're susceptible to hacking. Do you not use a password manager? No, I, I should. I think you once told me that, uh, or I saw you saying it on the Today Show or something, and it seemed very common. I just bought into the two-factor authentication. By the way, uh, Tisha Brea, who the, the golf... Um, um, influencer who we had on a month ago, I just saw on her Instagram that her Instagram was hacked because her phone didn't have two factor authentication. Her phone was hacked. And when they hacked her phone, they got her Instagram password. And since she's an influencer and has so many followers, that's what they were going for. And they took over her Instagram. Then she had to get a hold of Instagram to, to get it back. And wow. prove you're you, which is really hard to do because the, the hacker who now has control of it, um, they'll, the, the tie goes to the runner, I guess. They assume that it's the person who has control. So um, I don't know. We've just gotten to the weeds on cybersecurity. But. <laughs> These are the kinds of things Gene is very good at talking about. Everything <laughs> exactly. from cybersecurity what? to... Wait, I have one, though. I have This is in non-political news, so I, I can contribute this to the mix. Although, Vera, I don't want to hijack your rundown. Um, so this weekend, my intern texted us furiously 
um, somebody had texted her on her phone, said it was me, and wanted her to go out and buy a whole bunch of gift cards and then call and then text her basically, you know, scrape off the numbers, text her so that they could use those gift cards. She figured it out, but this is the same scam that happened to my daughter when she was an intern and has happened to several of her friends. And so my theory, and Mitch, you should know this for your kids because they will be interns, is that somebody is going through LinkedIn, searching for interns, figuring out who Uh their boss is and just texting. And it must be working often enough that it's happened to, you know, four people I know independently. This is somewhat related, but unrelated. But in the place that we're staying in Florida, there's free coffee in the morning. So I went downstairs and they have a carrier that you can put four cups in, you know, one of those. And I take, I don't take a new carrier every day. So I take yesterday's carrier, go downstairs and I was filling up my coffee and I turned to the guy next to me and I said, I said, I'm almost 60. I said, but I'm a hell of an intern. I thought that was the greatest (laughs) line. He looked at me. He had no idea what I was talking about. He spoke English, mind you, <laughs> but I thought that that was the greatest line of the day, and he had no idea. By the way, the dog behind you, Gene, is uh, in tr- doing something bad. Uh, oh, I, I just yeah, he he's he's uh, stepping up and whining, and if you hear crying in the background, it's it's not that you guys are are bringing me to tears. It's not Elliot. <laughs> it's not Elliot, and and it's not and it's not me. It says we're puppy sitting, so. All right. What can you do? Well, that's well, an doing this. Those are interesting scam stories. I mean, that's don't worry about hijacking the show. Mitch, Mitch does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but we do want to. I mean, Mitch, you're probably sick of talking about Bitcoin because I know you've been on the various. I want to hear. G, I want to hear Jean's take on Bitcoin because yeah. I'm sure she gets that question a lot. I do too, and I want to get your take also on Doge Dogecoin or whatever this really weird cryptocurrency that I keep hearing about that Mark Cuban bought for his son and Elon Musk is buying it for his son. I mean, it's like, I think I'm the wrong person to ask, quite frankly. I mean, Mitch and I work together, Veer and I, you, you and I work together for a long time. Mitch and Mm -hmm. I worked together for five years on a project for the PwC Charitable Foundation in conjunction with Time for Kids called Your Money, an in-school newsletter that went to 2 million kids every single month in their classrooms. Very, very gratifying work. But we, a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, when when Bitcoin made its first run um, up to $17,000, we did a story on crypto for 10 years, 10 year olds and dug in and figured out how to, how do you explain crypto to a 10 year old? And it, it, um, it was a great education for me, but where we shook out and, and where I think I continue to shake out, although I probably need to have another look at it, is that it is not your meat and potatoes. You know, it's this, it's this part of your portfolio that if you want to put 5% of it in or 10% or whatever, you can afford to lose without um becoming apoplectic that's on you but this is this is your angel investment this is your facebook and and i you know when when it was very very young right when it was still the the winklevi um i i think that's where i still am although this crazy run um courtesy of elon musk uh, has made a lot of people a lot of money Right. Yeah. And I think the fact that you've got some of the bigger firms are warming up to the idea mm-hmm. that's giving it more validation. So everyone's like, I need to be in crypto in some way, shape or form. And if you're not, you feel like you're missing out. Well, and I think what many people don't understand is that there are so many cryptocurrencies, right? It's not a hundred percent Bitcoin. There are many of them. And so it, it's, um, you know, it's possible that the way to go with this is to buy a, a crypto fund, you know, diversify in, buy a crypto ETF or something that gets you into a lot of them. Because if you've missed the boat on Bitcoin, uh, then maybe you'll do well if some of the others start to experience mm-hmm. some growth. Wouldn't it be funny if Dogecoin, which was started to make fun of cryptocurrency, becomes the actual cryptocurrency? That would just be like, 
<laughs> I mean, that would be like insane. Insane. So what do you think, well, Vera? I don't know. I, I wish I had Vera, do you do you own any? Do you own any Vitcoin? My sister, my sister does. My sister accidentally bought some uh way back when and she's now you know bragging about it. Uh I did put her in touch with someone at CNBC, Brian Kelly, who's the Bitcoin guy over there, to find out how to get out if she needs to get out because she can't remember her password and this. Oh, and if you don't remember well, that, the password, you're, you're screwed. stuck. I right. mean yeah. that- There's a story, there was a story, I think it was last week in the New York Times about a guy who's got at this point, like, well over $200 million in Bitcoin. He doesn't remember his password and he knows he can't get it. Gene, did the best part is he said he's come to terms with the fact that he knows he's never going to be able to get at that money. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was like, okay, you are more Zen than I am, dude. I would not be (laughs) able to come to terms with that. (laughs) Yeah, no, I kind of wish I got it a long time ago, but I I, uh, I certainly have talked about it and I've written about it and I don't even have a small portion of my portfolio in Bitcoin currently or any kind of cryptocurrency. But you're right, Gina, an index fund, or that would be a safer way to get in if you want to just dip a toe in. Yeah, one of the challenges with the exchange traded funds or ETFs that are that cover the crypto world, they don't, in, many of them cover more than just crypto. Uh, so crypto is a part of it. And the ones that are purely crypto, because of the market capitalization of, if that's the right term, of Bitcoin overpowers the rest of the crypto world. I think last I looked, it was close to 70% of all of the crypto world that you're basically investing in in Bitcoin. The only thing that you're hoping for in that ETF is one of the lesser known ones makes a wild run and you know, shifts it from it being 70% Bitcoin to 65% Bitcoin because of, but because the updraft of the smaller ones, if you want to dabble in it, I, I'd say dabble in Bitcoin directly, but it's, it's not for the faint of heart. I said on um, Fox business the other day that it was speculating to, to invest in it. And I got blown up by a, on social media by a Bitcoin lover who said, tell me that buying a stock isn't speculating. And the difference is, and this is the test that I use for a lot of things, especially companies in general. And this sort of dates back to the Enron days. If you can't explain to, I used to always say my mother, may she rest in peace, but if you can't explain to your mother what the company does or what in this case, Bitcoin is, then don't invest in it. And there's a big difference between buying a hundred shares of Apple that you can explain what Apple is by holding up an iPhone. You can explain, but you couldn't explain what Enron did. I mean, it was the most esoteric energy trading business, um, but you can explain to somebody what ExxonMobil is, you know, and Bitcoin's one of those things that, boy, you have to ask somebody to sit down before you start explaining what blockchain technology is and what tokens are like. So that's why it's not for everybody. And I think if it can't pass the test of you explaining it yourself, then don't buy it. That's what I say. I'm sure somebody will listen to this, John, and throw more shrapnel at you on our comment <laughs> bar, but oh well. Certainly getting a lot of hype. I mean, at top 48,000 for the first time after Tesla's big purchase. The other thing that's getting a lot of hype these days, and we haven't talked about it yet, is Clubhouse. I don't know if you guys have been reading about that, but it's a social networking app, invitation only. It's a hybrid of conference calls, talkback radio, and house party. So when you join, you pick what is of interest to you, whether that's business, health, finance, and then you sort of like eavesdrop on other people's conversations. So it's like How turning to a podcast, but it's live and you have this exclusivity element to it. So it's kind of cool and it's kind of hip. And they are thinking it's like the next big thing. The future Let's try it. it. Let's do a show. We need to try it. So uh, uh, help me understand. See, this falls into the category as I wouldn't invest in it because I don't understand it yet. But pe- you're listening to people's conference calls. Do the people on the conference calls know that they're subject to eavesdropping? But it's by invitation only. So you can only, people who get invited can only invite two people currently. There's maximum of 5,000 people per conversation from what I understand. I'm assuming there might be some privacy issues at some point <laughs> down the road, but it's definitely getting a lot of hype and they've got two over 2 million users right now. They, they have Elon Musk once again, but Elon is, you know, fueling all this frenzy everywhere. Uh, Oprah is on there apparently. 
Facebook is coming up with some sort of copycat. In the so, so let me, in, let, let me like, interrupt. So, so Oprah picks up the phone and calls Gail King right, on the right. phone. Would that be of interest to you? And yeah. Oprah, Oprah has for the $50 million they probably had to pay her or whatever ridiculous amount of money it is. She has made her entire life available because I wouldn't imagine that some of the people she's calling consent to having the phone call be part of it. Or is it all like it's most of reality more, tele- It's more like a combination of a, a podcast and a phone call, I think. It's not, it's not, people know that this conversation is being, can you hear that ridiculous puppy scratching in the background? Um, yes, but that's okay. I'm sorry. I, I can, okay. So, so people know that the conversation is being listened to and the conversations are largely produced to be listened to, right? They're, they, they are authentic and I think they're kind of casual. I'm very new to it. I just joined yesterday. So you should listen to me because I'm really, I'm an expert. Um, but it's, you had to pay, but you had to pay this. To, to no, join. I didn't. I got an invitation in my email. Oh, in fact, I gave. You can invite me. I Mish will just invite jealous. you. Mish is jealous because he didn't get invited. I, I will it. invite you. <laughs> I will you invite you. It. I knew no, it. I, I can actually invite both of you or all three of uh, you if you Vera. want, because I because somebody texted me today from Clubhouse saying, welcome. Do you need more invitations? So I can just say, yes, I need more invitations. And then I can invite you all and we can so talk and, free, and have a conversation. Are there commercials in there someplace? Oh, please. I'm not that much of an expert yet. Uh, I don't think so. No, I think I think this is one of those. We will get you in. We will get you hooked and we will charge you later. Right. I just think right. it's the logical next step to the people who live their life through social media. Why not start broadcast, you know, narrow casting it? So yeah, we I should think get it's, Nopo it's, in there. Yeah, that's what I, I, think I said. It's like yeah. it's right. supposed we to should be, be everywhere. like a participatory podcast, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it seems so like Gene's, a logical next step. Well, Gene, speaking of podcasts, uh, your whole media empire of her money started with a podcast it, it did it's it's nice that you call it an empire that's that's very generous of you i'm in marketing um, remember <laughs> um luca. what's the what's the dog's luca. name luke the luca. dog's okay. name is luca he's like six months old and and he's gonna have to go home um we just surpassed our 250th oh. episode and last year alone we had two million downloads Two million downloads wow. last year. Wow. Just for the audience's benefit, for those of you who are not part of that two million last year, tell us a little bit about the Her Money podcast. So the Her Money podcast is about all the ways money touches the lives of women. Um, we talk about careers. We talk about family. We talk about relationships. We talk about investing. We talk about our behavior with money and how we feel about our money. We have a fantastic guest every single episode. We do a mailbag segment each episode where we answer questions that we get from our listeners and we do a little news you can use. And it's, it's, uh, it's just I I just love it. I mean, I'm like the fun that you guys are having here. We have we have fun on the podcast as well, and it's part of um, her money media, which uh, has a we've got a website called hermoney.com where we publish new content every single day. We publish a couple of newsletters every week, and that that is growing. And we just launched a. Uh, a coaching program called Finance Fix, um, where we are helping people really get a grip on their money. So for people who feel like their money is, their financial life is chaotic, like it's out of control, like they're not saving enough, they, like they're spending too much, like they wish they could A, set a goal and B, achieve it. This eight-week program is is designed to whip you into shape with the um, help of live coaching and a team that's going through the process at the same time that you are. 
and Luca. So, Good time. And Luca. So many people yeah. now. So many people now are struggling. And women in particular are having a really tough time. You know that they've lost their jobs disproportionately to the to the guys. They're trying to. They're at home with the kids, trying to help them with their school, and uh, it's just it's almost it's too much. It's too much. It, it is too much. I mean, a million moms out of work, 5.4 million women have lost jobs during this recession or the she session as, as they're calling it. And, um, and it's going to take us decades to, to get back to where we were before this started. So is it exclusively for women though? Is there any role for There's- men there is. Okay. Yes, there is. We know that guys listen to the podcast. Um, you know, because you've been one, that guys are guests on the podcast. Um, we have male participants in Finance Fix. And, and we get letters um, on, on the podcast from our male listeners. And we know that they're male because they always start out with a sentence that says something along the lines of, I'm a guy, but I have a question. And I hope that you'll answer it anyway. And then, you know, we answer it anyway. All right. And well, you would think if you're talking about relationships, many of those relationships that women have are with men. So uh, men are in the mix money-wise regardless. One thing I would tell you, and if we were still running, Jean and I ran together, A, when we were in the same county, but B, when she wasn't injured, we would talk about these kinds of topics. I think the most misunderstood money topic as people are getting older is what I'll call estate and trust matters, but that just automatically those words just start scaring people. But if you ever have to deal with the passing of a parent and the financial chaos that comes with that, um, it's, it's mind boggling. And I'm trained in that area and it's overwhelming for the average person who's not perhaps financially, legally, accounting-wise, tax-wise sophisticated enough, I think it's probably more stressful than the loss of the loved one. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. So I, where do people find that? Is that part of your world uh, as well? We, we do have a lot of information on that and setting yourself up for that and setting your family up for that so that they don't have to go through the kind of chaos that you're talking about on the on the back end. But I'm wondering, do you think that it is so stressful because people don't do the proper planning in advance? Because I mean, you talking, we were talking password rents account is, you know, that can be that can bring you to tears, right? At a time when you're already in tears. And my stepdad has insisted that all of us, his children, my mother's children, that we write these letters of instruction and suggestion. That's what that's what he calls them. And the suggestion part is because he wants to tell us all how to live our lives. But it's just listening? a list. He won't listen to He's this. He's not listening to this. <laughs> is a list of, um, and we love him, but yeah. it's a list of here's the accountant, here's the lawyer, here's where everything is kept, here yeah. is... Here well, I call, it the, I call it the death binder or the God forbid binder. Yes, Don't that. open it up until, yes. We should, but I'll, I'll tell you a quick, at the, the risk of Vera saying that I hijacked the podcast, but I'll tell you a quick story that my dad, I stumbled across in my dad's records what ultimately amounted to a $4,000 death benefit that he had in an old pension that he had been getting literally like $150 a month from. And I wanted to claim the death benefit, but they wouldn't talk to me because I wasn't my dad, but I couldn't bring my dad back to talk. So, and I didn't want to incur legal fees and I could do most of this myself, but I didn't want to incur legal fees to compel them to talk to me because it would have cost me more than the $4,000 to do that. Well, fast forward, my nephew finds, I don't know why, but my nephew finds on New York State's abandoned property database, an account that my mom, who passed away in 2014, had had that was tied to her. Well, to access that account, I have to go through like the Wicked Witch of the, kill the broom of the Wicked Witch of the West kind of stuff. It's like literally Wizard of Oz stuff. But I don't know what it is. So I'm not going to incur legal fees. It could be a penny. It could be $10,000. I don't know. And if you're not trained in all of this, it's completely overwhelming. So 
I made a deal with my friend who's a state and trust lawyer to write a letter to the state saying this office represents so-and-so. Just tell me as counsel for the administrator of the person's estate, how much money it is so we can decide if we want to spend the time going after it. But um, nobody has this binder and no one wants to put together the binder. And even if you're really, really, really good at it, and I got my dad after my mom passed really, really good at it. And I got all of his stuff in one bag. Even still, it's like whack-a-mole. I'm finding these these things and canceling a uh, an, an insurance policy like on his apartment, like just renter's insurance. They won't do it because I'm not him. Aye. And I had a durable power of attorney. They didn't care. They said, oh, well, that's fine that you have power of attorney, but we need his consent. I'm like, no, you don't need his consent. I have a durable power of attorney. Well, the power of attorney doesn't matter anymore because he's not a living thing. It's like crazy. Wow. And, uh, so. So that in any event, like a mess. that sounds like I'm a mess. so sorry. I mean, the the, the yeah. good news, I think, because what one thing, one of the good things coming out of the pandemic is a lot of people have been, you know, planning their whip, doing their wills, doing them online. They're managing their estates better. They're doing little succession planning that we hadn't seen previously. So even I, I mean, I've sat down with my mom and I've gotten her passwords now and I'm her digital executor, <laughs> as she calls me. But it's really when, after when this is happening, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I need to sit down with her and have this this talk. I mean, I picked the right moment. You know, it wasn't when we were feeling nostalgic or too sad, but we just did it. We banged that in an afternoon, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. Well, um, on that somber note, um, yeah. we're 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 out of. Sorry, time. I'm never getting an invite back. I have a dog in the background, and and we're like crying. No, well, you know what? I'm the one who brought us down to the rabbit hole of estate and trust matters. But what I was trying to illustrate is there's so many topics that involve money that you don't even like. You, we live in the moment. So you have credit card bills and you're worried about credit card bills. Well, that's that's one thing. But there's things you're not even thinking about. And that's why if you're not subscribing to the Her Money podcast, you should. That's why if you don't read Jean's uh two times a week newsletters, you should. And whether you're a man, now we know man and woman are able to follow your money or her money. I just slipped with the your money, but um, we encourage you to do so. And Jean, we thank you for your time. Uh, what Jean should be doing right now is listening to a podcast about puppy raising because she's got <laughs> quite, a, quite a rascal behind her. But we thank you for uh, the uh, the time and enjoy the snow. Vera and I down here in Florida, and uh, we're, we're not looking back. Uh, but thanks for coming on. And to our listeners, thanks, as always, for listening. And John and Vera, great to see you guys. And you're listening to the NOPO podcast, News Without the Noise. <laughs>